listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Why do hoes get chose and good girls don't? Definitions are very tricky. Hoes, sexual liberation. I don't know if it's a hoe versus a good thing. A versus um, a hoe versus. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm disagreeing. But in my mind, if that hoe. is giving the man the attention that he wants, specifically the attention that he thinks he needs. But the good girl is saying, prove yourself to me. Where do you think he's gonna go? If the good girl is saying, impress me first, not saying this is right or wrong, I'm just saying that's the dynamic of when you say good girl, this is what's happening in a relationship of a man and a good girl versus a man and a hoe. If that hoe is listening or satisfying a specific need that this good girl will not give, where is he going to go? He's going to go to the hoe. If that good girl is having unrealistic expectations about how she needs to feel in the conversation versus understanding that as much as you're impressing, you need to impress me, you need to woo me. But I also need to show that I can care for you. If the man feels that it's a one-sided thing, he's going to go to a woman who understands a transaction. A hoe. I do this for you. And you will do this for me. Because no matter what it is, you give a different name or whatever it is to, to, to him, but he's feeling in that moment that what I'm giving to you, I'm getting something in return. Versus this situation where at certain times is one doing, and then the other times is another person saying, okay, I accept. Versus I'm doing, and then you're also doing. If the synergy or the energy is not reciprocated, Niggas is going to go for the hoes and the good girls will be left stranded. I put them in quotes because I still don't know the definition of hoes versus a good girl just yet. But I'm trying to tell you what a dynamic is of what will attract a man versus not attract a man. That's how I answered that question. If that makes sense. Okay. Describe your ideal woman oh. and describe her ideal man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So pretty much is my ideal woman. I'm my, my ideal woman's man. That's a good question. Oh, damn. That's a good ass question. <laughs> my ideal woman. I'm looking for a woman who's who I'm, I think I'm compatible to. You know, I don't have a list. I do have a list. I'm not cap. I do. But I don't know if it's that long. Um, I'm just looking for a black woman, probably specifically. But apart from that, anything else is compatibility. So I would assume I'm that woman's man, too, because I'm compatible to her and she's compatible to me. Then we can discuss our model of love and what it would look like for us, what it would, how it would sustain us. And eventually, if we're thinking about a family, how it would sustain our family, too. Um, but I'm looking for a compatibility. I'm looking for a woman who understands my essence, understands me and why I'm doing what I do. Then, if I can trust that, then I've given her the permission to look inside of me and decide what needs to be changed. If I trust you in that, I hope that I'm that man for you too, in that other aspect of it. So, I'd like to believe that whoever I'm compatible to, she's also going to be compatible to me. What makes black men hesitant to fully unify in peace with black women? Mm. 
What makes a black man hesitant to fully unify with a black woman? Or maybe our goals are different. It's not, I don't know if, take, it, take the race out, for example. Take everything out, just talk about two human beings. For us to unify, we have to agree in certain terms. But if just without the race, right? The pain point of black unification sometimes is that because we're all black, we think we see everything the same way. And that's where it's confusing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just black women are having different priorities now and black men are having different priorities. It's just that simple. And my question when you asked me in the beginning was, my theory, and I think is my answer to this too, if I was going to say my answer, but it's also low-key a theory because I want it to be challenged. But I do not remember any time in history where we went to black liberation and we all said, yo, this is what will make sense for us. It never, the world was just changing. Niggas is changing, men are changing for what it's worth. With, you know, women are changing drastically. Then women have different goals. The women have different ideas of how their family should be. Different have different... Everything has changed. And specifically, it's new. Men came up with a different models of families. Still open to changes, but it's still different. And then when you have those two goals, I'm not saying they're not compatible. I just said we haven't even talked about how we are changing. So if we're changing so drastically, into the, where, where do we think this unification is going to come from? It's not going to come from anywhere because we're all still, we, we keep, we're pretending like we're, we, this shit is not making us different, but it is making us different. Like, for example, it's, uh, I'll give you an example. I, I don't know if a lot of people are just looking to get married or know why they're getting married, Right? Black men, I would like to think that there is on the forefront of us is seeing that our marriage represents something a little bit more, you know, so we have to do things a different way. If a man is suggesting that you'll look for this shit to make sense, I am a man and I will take care of certain responsibilities. You approach a woman with that in that sense, she may say no, because she has a different definition of how a man should be in that marriage. And I don't know if you guys know this, but it's kind of hard to be told as a man how they should be in a family. It's very difficult. Because I, <laughs> I already have a model. I'm not looking to be taught by a woman how to be a man in a relationship. I'm not. No woman is going to teach me that. She's not going to teach me how to be a husband. She's not going to teach me how to be a better man. No. No, no, well, better man, she can help and support, correct. But it's not, she's not going to tell me how to be a husband in a relationship. If, if she is, then she could look for another man for that. This is why I don't argue. I don't have these conversations with that. I'm just looking for the woman who understands where I'm coming from. That's all. But I'm not looking to sit down and say, hey, look, this is the kind of husband I want you to be in this, in this family. It's like, okay, cool. I'm just not the man here. Maybe just substitute me for another man. It's not me. I would just quietly escort myself out of that conversation. I don't think you're wrong. I just think you're just different from how I'm saying things. That's all. Why do you hold on to women knowing you don't want to be with her long term? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think if it's happened to me before. And I don't want to answer the question based on another person's answer. But I know it happens a lot. So I'm a little sensitive to that question. 
Of all questions, I'll give you an answer to that. That one, I don't know. It's, it's tricky because time, time is a very interesting thing. So can I skip questions? Because I don't know the answer to that question. Um, why do we, what if, what if we just don't like you? What if we decided that we didn't like you eventually? What if you were dating a girl that you really liked and then you decided you didn't like her? So why do you hold on to her? Hold on to her. Oh, that's the trick question. Okay, you didn't get, okay, you didn't end the, <sighs> why do you hold on to her if you're not going to be with her? Hold on. So when you mean hold on, you mean you kept telling her, you kept telling her, I want to be with you. I want to continue to have a long-term relationship. But then, but you know, deep inside, you don't want that for her. So it could look like that, or it could look like, um, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship with you, but I'm still going to hit you up so you can come over. Or I still because he wants enjoy your company. being, you know, in your company, like okay. you romantically, yeah. but I don't want to be with you like why do you not why do you hold on to her in that aspect hmm she's fulfilling something though but you're also admitting that he is telling you that he does not want to be in a relationship with you because i want to know the difference between a lie of him directly lying to you and if that's the case that's an easy answer he just the nigga fucking lied to you versus telling you that he didn't like you but he like aspects of you, which I think everybody does do that to a certain extent. I think. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I think mm -hmm. in some and in most situations, it's an unspoken thing. So it's it's the it's not a direct lie of I want to be with you, but I you know don't want to be with you long term, or I just omit that I don't want to be with you long term. But it's more of a we have fun. I want to be with you. Let's continue doing what we're doing. And I'm just not going to say anything. I'm not going to... Okay, so if he doesn't say anything, doesn't that mean that he's trying to decide if you're the long-term answer? I don't know if men have a problem with deciding who's going to be long-term, though. Is deciding if you're the one that's going to be the long-term answer. But then if you know that she's not the long-term one, why do you continue to engage mm -hmm. and Because you engage her. Getting her up. Right. Taking out resources. Ooh. Right, right. You allow, you continue to allow her to pour into you mm. for what? For, yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. At least not yet. But here are the factors that I see. I don't know the answer to that specific question. But the factor that I'm also seeing is if a man is approaching you to get resources from you, let me just use the word. I, want it, I don't want it to make it a intimate whatever, just resources from you. And you're not wanting to give him the resources because he's either said or not said, which technically is an answer in itself, right? Not said he wanted to be with you in the future. Why are you allowing him to take the, the resources from you? There are two questions on board. The questions that you asked me and the question I'm asking now. Why is he still being allowed to take the resources from you? Is it that you're believing that he has said something and is, but you want it to be a different answer? I think from a woman's perspective, what you're saying and what you're doing don't match up. So then women are trying to figure out which one is the truth. Is it true? that you know you do want to be with me you do enjoy my company and my time because you continue to hit me up we continue to do other things whether that be intimate or not um you know you seek some kind of solace within me or is it true that because you haven't said anything or you have said i don't want anything further which one is which one is the truth your actions or what you're saying or not saying or not saying so if you're not saying Here's how I think about it in two ways. It's either I know I want to, I want to be in a long-term relationship and I'm trying to decide if it's you or I'm lying to you. Are you willing to accept that I haven't decided that it's you? That's, the, that's, the, that's that long-term answer. That's where I'm coming from. I still don't know the answer to your question, though, so I'm not dodging it. 
but I'm also seeing it from the other. I'm trying to see it from a different perspective of what is. Are you accepting this thing because you think you can change me, and so you never let me go, or you're accepting my lie? What is that? I don't know. But that's the that's the that's one way. It's not me. I, I would tell you straight up if I want to be in a long term relationship. So just to be clear, I I don't think I have a problem with that, and I do pres- presently want to be in a long term relationship. I want to be in a relationship, but mm, okay. Okay, I probably shouldn't have said that. It's a long-winded. I want to be in a relationship. I do. But I also want to choose someone and want to make sure that person makes sense for that goal. What kind of daughter do you plan to raise? Hey, Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, You know, it's not the relationship of the man and the woman that is actually the hardest part of this conversation is the relationship of the woman and his definition of a woman in the daughter that is the hardest conversation because you and the woman are two different human beings and you can always negotiate the shit out the daughter on the other hand is a little special anyway so answer that question what daughter do i want or do i do i want to raise yes what daughter do you plan to raise what kind um, of daughter? If you ask any black man, they'll say, I want to raise a strong, independent black woman. And then when she becomes a strong, independent black woman, we say, nah, nigga, y'all niggas is doing too much. <laughs> the irony of life. <laughs> I do want to raise, I don't want to raise an independent black woman. I want to raise a woman who chooses the right person to be dependent on. We're a dependent social human being. We're dependent human beings. Men need and should, and men need to depend on women and women to depend on men. I am not raising my daughter to be an independent black woman. I'm, in, I'm raising my daughter to be conscious, to understand the power of her blackness and the role it plays for her specifically, for her family in the future, and her community. So that's my answer to that. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't advocate for independent beings. We're not independent. We're created and we're here to be dependent. But what roles are you playing? What do you do best and not do best? How do you want that to make sense for the future? And secondly, you know, the, the dynamic of families in the future is also going to be different from what we're even talking about now. So that's even a conversation that <laughs> is crazy to even talk about right now. But yeah.